money is only important enough to keep us going, to let us do this. It'd be much simpler for me to just, uh, you know, coast along without the kids farming and then retire and sell it all. But because they're here, it's extremely rewarding. It's really an excellent journey. There's Hannah, she's our oldest daughter. She's like the rock solid one that you can count on all the time. Then we have Katie, our middle daughter, the one that keeps us all in check. And then there's Elizabeth, she's the youngest, and she keeps everything fun for us. I remember always um, being excited to ride in the tractor with him. Mom would drive us out and we would hop in the tractor and he always got us really involved. He was very into setting goals and always brought us into that process as well. So our farm is, I feel like, constantly moving forward and progressing because we are staying on track to what our goals are. It's one thing that I think all of us have kind of taken away from him being our dad is his passion. You do what you do the best you can. I do think sometimes he still thinks he has to continue raising us, which um, most days is a good thing because we like having his advice. But some days, of course, you know, dads can be a little annoying. Let's check the other one as long as we're here too, right? I'll get it on. There you go. Teamwork. Okay, go ahead. Are you going to do it or am I? Go ahead. Sometimes daughters need a little help, though, don't they, Kate? Dad, just because there's cameras here doesn't mean you have to treat me like I'm fine. I thought I was treating you like I loved you. Typical morning routine this time of the year, I would hop up and I would head out and check the cattle. Then we can have a 10 or 15 minute meeting to kind of discuss what are the priorities for the day. We did have a ice snowstorm, so we need to finish moving all the snow. We need to uh, feed the cattle and bed the cattle. We need to haul some corn. I would say in the next 10 years, we probably need to double our gross revenue. So we gotta be more efficient. We've been lucky to have over 200 bushels of corn over the last few years and beans extremely good as well. The whole sustainable thing is really two facets. One is that the business side to be sustainable long-term, making sure you have enough dollars coming in so that the next generation can come back. And then the other side over here is the whole, how do we take good care of our soils? Technology will play a big role too. Variable rate planting, variable rate fertilizer, uh, the technology and the planters. We've been lucky that we have quite a bit of technology. And if you don't keep up with that stuff, you're so far behind, not only financially, but knowledge wise too. Probably right in through here would be a really good spot. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, Something like that? Yeah. So the next step is to export this and get it in your planter. That's kind of why I have climate, because I have green equipment in the spring and red in the fall, and climate kind of brings it all together. It's kind of cold out there. I ran the tractor, so the, hopefully it's warm out there for, for that. So, If not, Ben, you'll just have to toughen up a little. My father-in-law teases that Harbin, almost your whole farm is a research plot. And it's like, yeah, because that's what we need to do. We kind of have a fun saying that, hey, if you take care of your soil, it'll take care of you. We have one corn on corn field that's not. And we have one sugar beet field that's not. Otherwise, 100% of our acres are uh, all strip till. On average right now, we're at 1.5 bushels better in strip till than conventional corn. The cover crop is interesting. It's not as clear cut as some of the other things that we do. We've been discussing this as a farm team for about four years. A core value of our farm is really taking care of the land that God has given us, right? And making sure that we are enhancing it for future generations. With our strip till, we're very happy with it. We're also getting the soil organic matter and we have residue present in our strip till fields. So in what ways will cover crops add an additional benefit? One of the main things that I think of when I think of rolling southern Minnesota ground is water infiltration. Not only, you know, to prevent erosion and water quality issues, but it's a big one for dry times of the year. Katie's big part of cover crops is they have to be economical. So 
We hear a lot about uh, carbon markets and stuff like that. So this is the overview, is it? Yeah, so this is your foreground overview page and essentially you can look at your total as far as what's eligible for bare carbon and what your potential payment is. And then as we add more programs as well, you can see whether you're eligible for those programs. We can make decisions because we've done the research, the homework, and decide is it profitable to do this or not. We've always been a family but now we have a lot of business decisions to make. Farming is such a high capital business, so I think it's a little nerve wracking trying to figure out how do we get involved in what my dad has started because we each have our individual operations that we have. It's dealing with the dynamics, I think, of we're all in different places, but yet we want to be in the same place and how do we get there? Which, at the end of the day, farming is messy and it's just a fun adventure to be on and we get to figure that out together, which makes it really fun. Who's taking notes of who's doing what today? Anybody? I can. I had a note sheet. Okay, in front of you is a handout, so we have to make a decision by the end of the day. So Ryan, my good buddy, has found us a 2022 planter. The cost is a lot. The trade price would be 167. So what do you guys think? What's the biggest downfall to the current planter that we have? I would say the biggest thing is we move to strip till. We have to be able to move residue all the time. Well, I think there's also a safety feature too. Is it safer to drive this planter versus the other one or not? Yes. Now we have 22 feet saddle tanks and the planter is big. So it's a little unsafe going down county roads. So that's one. I'm really excited for the agronomics of this new planter. I know last spring and the previous few springs after scouting right after emergence, we would see some gaps and whatnot that was mostly due to the planter and the residue from the planter. And so it'll have a huge improvement on consistency of seedling vigor and the agronomics of it. It concerns me a little bit, I think, especially as we move into times. Yes, you agree? Um, <laughs> times that like have tighter margins. I'm a little hesitant too because of the economics, but I'm a little concerned if we don't do it of what's going to happen. Having faith is probably the biggest thing that we have to have as a farmer because there's so many variables that are outside of your control. You know, sometimes the old Lord really pushes us, but every year we farm, he's taking care of us. We farm as family and that's why we farm. You know, my mom grew up on a dairy farm about 12 minutes south of here, and my dad grew up on a farm about 48 corn rows away maybe. Just kind of cool that we've been able to make our farm, you know, the glue that brings them together and that brings our next generation together too last fall on the radio. I said, girls, pinch yourself because not everybody gets to do this. We are really, really lucky.